Good morning. I was going to change my robe, but I thought, you know what, why bother? I'll keep it the same. I'm in my comfy green robe and I wanted to say good morning and come on here and talk about essential oils that create inflammation. Yeah, you heard me. Um, and here, here's the thing. I was asked a question the other day on Clubhouse with regards to why am I here? You know, what's my mission? Why am I here? Why am I here? I'm here to connect you with truth, not your truth, because that is your truth is what you've experienced. But I'm talking about truth. And that is a higher consciousness. And this in the sense that it comes from nature, nature is and you are nature is guided by consciousness, all of nature. That's what makes us organic. That's what makes us truly blessed, if you will. Um, ha that, that's what actually helps us to thrive. And I'm currently writing a blog post for this morning. And, it's, and I started it yesterday. Well, I started one yesterday about inner conflict. But I'm going to continue on with that. Because there's a song, you can't always get what you want. And that's really what leads to inflammation and inner conflict. So what do I mean by this? And what do I, I mean, who am I to say that I'm here to connect you to truth? It's, I oftentimes tell people that I have a detector inside of me that I can, deception and misunderstanding literally rock my inner world. I feel myself twitch. It's kind of like, um, yeah, I just put it that way. <laughs> There's a detector inside of me. And this is really what inspires the work that I do. It's the reason why revolutionary aromatherapy even exists. Because there's things that I've been hearing along the lines, you know, throughout the years, which is over 40 years now, that didn't necessarily resonate with my higher self, with the God consciousness ex coming through me, ex you know, experiencing life through me. It didn't resonate. So I have really take it upon myself to be in the space of understanding, investigating, and delivering. Now, one of the things that I share frequently, um, whether it's in a blog or on Clubhouse, and that is that the Essenes were a culture of people that understood they were light beings. Today, we have science that is actually proving that we are light beings. And so like, the reason I want to talk about essential oils and inflammation is because just because it's natural doesn't mean, especially in the world that we live in right now, especially in this world. So before I say anything further, please understand that it is recognized that your epigenome, your, the epigenetics of you is reversible. The epigenome is simply a system of adaptation. That is your stress response, and it is needed for many purposes. It's basically it's your protection mechanism, and it helps you to sleep. It helps to regulate many cycles throughout the body, natural cycles. But there again, it also is a protection mechanism based on, I mean, in order to keep us safe from bacteria, viruses. And I know there's probably some judgments around that because if you're getting sick, how are you? How is it protecting you? Let me just put it to you this way. Your immune system is distinctly different than anybody else's. This was discovered um, in the early stages of the Human Genome Project. They um, were able to d distinguish the fact that the human immune system altered itself during the time of the Black Plague. So much so, there's, a, there's a, actually an imprint that was one of the most significant changes that occurred to the human body. But think about what's happened since the Black Plague. Tons of technology, which includes medications and many, many chemicals. And what the CDC is coming forward and saying, and others, other scientists, because the CDC is getting it from science, is that your epigenome is affected by behavior and environment. And I just wanna say here that it's a, the environment means internal as well as external. So this is not about blame, this is simply fact. So as your epigenetics are changed, then systems are altered. 
and this is where inflammation comes into play. It's the reason why your body actually goes to sleep. It's to produce melatonin, not because melatonin helps you sleep, because it is an anti-inflammatory hormone that is required to help relieve the, the inflammation that came up, that built up throughout the day. And that could be for any number of reasons. Exposure to chemicals, emotional, you know, emotionally volatile moments, um, just, or for that matter, just being stressed about something in your own life. Okay, so stress, stressors are what alter your epigenome. And when we don't get a hold of that, it can run rampant. So back to talking about essential oils that can lead to inflammation, because natural in this world does not always mean safe because there's many, many interactions. Um, not all, yeah, just chemicals don't mix well. If you go to a chemistry lab, you can see that not all of them play well together. They are explosive in some cases. So what oils could potentially be causing inflammation in you? Well, let's see, let's start with a popular one, peppermint. Peppermint actually contains a number of chemicals known to be inflammatory in the body. I know that it actually makes a difference when you use it initially, that you feel some sense of relief. I'm gonna invite you to consider that could be just the aroma that's affecting your brain. And this is where we have to be more and be mindful of what we're using, because just because you have that initial, oh yeah, this feels good, it could be memory. Not that there's anything wrong with memory, but the truth is, the truth is that epigenetically you're stimulating inflammation on the long term. I was asked yesterday in the clubhouse room, you know, is it possible that we could use something thinking that it's good for us and that it ultimately lead to problems or challenge, you know, I'm going to say challenges. And the answer is yes. And peppermint is one of them. For one thing, it actually increases tissue permeability. This is the reason why menthol is frequently used in many, many products because it, it, what that means is it increases the skin's ability to absorb chemicals. Go figure. And long-term use of menthol alone increases inflammation because it stimulates the immune system to produce interleukins. Um, that's just one chemical. It actually has other chemicals that also are problematic because they will um, give uh, run, increase the risk of blood thinning. We'll just say it that way, among other things. So excessive use, consistent use of peppermint or anything with menthol is leading to inflammation in your system. The second oil that I'm going to list here is um, Fennel, oftentimes found in digestive blends. Fennel contains um, a couple of chemicals that are also known to be blood thinning. And um, blood thinning, the, the way the body regulates itself to keep the blood thin, right? So to prevent um, coagulation, you know, um, thickening of the blood. That's the word I was looking for. To prevent thickening of the blood, it, it's, a, it's a hormonal regulation because the platelets are what create thickening of the blood. That's what keeps your blood, you know, the, the thickness of your blood at a way that you're not bleeding out. So it maintains the quality of the blood through the bone marrow. Your bone marrow is part of the hormonal system. If you don't produce enough platelets, you tend to run on the thin side of blood. If you produce too many platelets, again, this is all hormonally regulated, you develop blood or thicker blood and start to get clots. You might think, well, it'd be good to use something like fennel. And the other oil I was going to you know, mention is anise, another one that's found frequently in digestive blends. But there again, the blood thinning qualities, the occasional use of them, not so bad. You know, again, not so bad. But I mean, I, what I mean by occasional is I mean maybe a couple times a month. Because ultimately, if you think about that, 
if you're using something that's thinning the blood on a daily use or a regular regular use you're actually telling you're actually letting your body your hormonal system know first of all you're influencing you're having a very strong influence on the hormonal system which is now going to signal the reduction of platelets think about the long-term effect of that you know so it's not just along the lines of you know medical and dental you know potentially having a, an invasive medical or dental procedure where you don't want to be have thin blood during that time but just think about the long-term effects on the hormonal system when you use something like anise and fennel it's not going to be helpful at all and it and they do not mix with other blood thinning medications so this is the reason why those particular oils lead to inflammation because the long-term use of them is problematic on the hormonal system because it's basically telling the hormonal system don't do what you're designed to do and that will lead to inflammation and instability I'm gonna throw one other oil in here because it's a popular one and that's oregano oregano also it leads to inflammation in the system because it's a phenol it has phenols in it and it's a very high concentration of a particular phenol known as carvacrol there are other oils that have carvacrol in them but oregano is is widely used and if your body is not able to metabolize phenols properly due to changes on your epigenome you're actually complicating this that you're actually maintaining the problem so the idea here is to get your epigenome back to more of a stable back to stability i don't want to say balance because you basically your system's always in balance it's just a matter of what it's handling at the moment so as a partner to your body you can begin to make more selective choices that align with what your body actually needs in this moment it honors your needs as opposed to what mainstream media is telling you and that's just that that's the reason why i'm here is because it's time to be honest about what we're really doing with our system and what's available and what the potential is that you have to really restore health and wellness and align yourself with healing but it takes understanding them so i'm going to finish out with this and, and wish you a beautiful beautiful day and weekend and that's this i have a membership that's launching april 1st and right now i'm offering an introductory offer at seven dollars a month sign up now you lock in at that rate for as long as you want to remain and it's a course it's an aromatherapy course that gets into things just like this it allows us to get into deeper conversations that are amongst ourselves and when you sign up now you have access to a number of documents including videos about three and a half hours worth of videos plus handouts so you'll have a lot of material to go through between now and april 1st now I'm going to say one other thing before I sign off here. If you want to consider this, I'm I've launched a nonprofit that serves those struggling with mental illness in hospital settings whereby we go in and we support them with oils at no cost. And so if you want to add $10 a month to your membership you will be not only you will be contributing to the benefit of these people because you'll actually be supporting the supply of oils going in to helping promote stability in their systems where they can find more comfort and the name of the nonprofit is the mind revolution so let me know if that's something or if you just want to just donate to that I can I'll set up a separate link on the link tree but I just wanted to put that out there because I'm really excited about this this is something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time and so I meditated on it prayed on it and the answers are now just being revealed and I'm super excited to be doing this so again seven dollars a month locked in now you get a ton of information between now and the first of April details about that are available if you when you contact me um, but it is a weekly I'll just give you some ideas here it is weekly information monthly Q&A live Q&A 
along with community and you know where you get a lot it's a weekly information about an oils teaching you specifically about oils there's no customization in this and it mildly touches on some of the science so that you have a better understanding of the oils and like I said you'll have access to me with questions along with the community discussions and then a monthly Q&A about things that may have come up along the um, along the way so that's what's available that's in my link tree let me know or just click on it and sign up and if you have any questions feel free to message me i'm here and this is this is what i love and i love sharing it with you so that said have a beautiful friday thank you very much for being here i love you and i'll be back soon i actually am working on um a carousel right now on dry mouth and what that is all about. So anyway, love you, thank you, and I will be back soon. Bye-bye now.